I'm super stoked to be sitting here with my man Brooks to bring you a little history lesson here on a very impactful and, and game-changing lure. And that is the Ben Parker Magnum Spoon. Is this an eight or a nine inch here? That is the original eight inch size. Wow. The original so eight inch size, yeah. There's a nine inch eight. now. Well, yeah, there might be a 10 inch in the works soon. <laughs> that could be, yeah. But we're gonna sit down here, we're gonna poke Brooks's brain here and learn about the origin of the Ben Parker Magnum Flutter Spoon because I obviously I'm familiar with Ben Parker and his name, but I don't know who he is. Totally. Uh, I don't know his impact. I don't understand why his name is on all of these big spoons. So uh, we're gonna go down uh, memory lane here with Brooks and he's gonna uh, spill the beans and, and really go explain how we came from this prototype here to the how many hundreds of thousands? Oh yeah, probably at this point. Yeah, millions maybe. No, mil I wish I could say millions. Probably hundreds we'll get of there. thousands. Though. We're gonna get there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's something that I see all throughout the country now in, in tackle boxes. Uh, of yeah, new applications for it all the time. Yeah, it's been an exciting day. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, the big spoon obviously was another moment in my fishing career where I became re-aware of the brand. Yeah. And we talked about this over breakfast, is it, seeing that presence at the Bassmaster Classic Expo in Greenville. Right? Yeah, it was in Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah. yeah, we, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that like I call them luck, you know. Um, some people would say like, I think I just have been at the right place at the right time sometimes for a few big breaks. I mean, at the same time, you know, it doesn't come without preparation hard work. The spoon, though, is one of those things where, like, I mean, you know, the story of the spoon is that we've been making four and five inch spoons for years. Have you ever heard this story? Mm. It's pretty interesting. Like, Lay it on us, man. Lay it on us. We, uh, we've been making four and five inch spoons for a very long time. Okay. When I took over, even, they had been making these four and five like inch Like the Lake Forks? Yeah, the Lake, they called it Lake Fork size spoon. Four and five inch spoon at the time. I mean, the five inch spoon was the biggest spoon on the market. Right. There was one Joe Spates made that was a little bit bigger, um, but that was like it. Uh, and we had a lot of success with them, you know, as far as just from a sales standpoint and a fishing standpoint. But in I think it was 2013, um, there was a small like everybody sees them in the back of Bassmaster magazine. There's a very short article about like seasonal pattern for the month or something like that. Okay. It was a summertime pattern they had interviewed a guy named Ben Parker for, who was an ex-Bassmaster Pro, full-time Kentucky Lake fishing guy. Got it. He's in the back of that magazine, he's like, yeah, you know, we use the four and five inch Nichols flutter spoons. I never met Ben. Okay. So for him to mention, like, I had only been doing this for a year, for a guy like that to be like mentioning our product in a major publication like that was a really big deal for me. Sick. So I just called him to say, hey man, Thanks. Like, I really appreciate it. You know, you really threw me a bone with that. You didn't have to do that. Most people are going to say in that situation, yeah, use a prototype spoon or whatever. Right. Uh, but he like went out of his way to, to throw me a bone. You know, so I got on the phone with Ben. He's like, man, you know, these four and five spoons are good. We're catching a lot of fish on them. But really up here on Kentucky Lake, the gizzard shatter, like, you know, they're like 12 inches long. Mondos. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. If, if we could get a bigger spoon that better imitates that, like, I'd really love it. And in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, I was like, how big do you want it, Ben? You know, he's like, I love like an eight inch spoon. So, you know, we thought about it for a and while. You compare an eight inch spoon, well, right, that, to a, a standard spoon at the time. That's, a, like, thing. that's a big jump. Well, I think in my head, I had looked at this bait and was like, well, this is five inches, like three extra inches, like that's not crazy. But then you start, you know, accounting for the width. When the proportions change along with it, I got the first, the first prototype was hand cut and hand like stamped out you know with a rubber mallet to put like the curvature. some door stuff like yeah straight out. <laughs> that's how they did it. they put the curvature in there it was just a plain brass piece of metal that we got that had been cut i told them i want an eight inch spoon 
proportionally like the same as you know the five inch spoon got it they thought i was an idiot uh for a long time i thought i was an idiot because <laughs> i got these things in and just thought it was the most ridiculous thing i'd ever right. seen um i let it sit on the shelf as a prototype for probably you know four or five months wow ben starts to I actually pull it down off the wall this was the first prototype i had ever gotten of that bait just a piece of brass, just a piece of yellow brass. Dude, that's sick. But you see, I mean, it's hand, you know, hand cut. They just kind of stamped it out. Um, this was the first thing I ever saw. Like I said, like I thought it was ridiculous. Oh, absolutely, so, it is ridiculous. Yeah, but, but I did. That's the beauty of it. Well, I had no idea, but so I, I had one more sample made that looked like this with this foil on it. Okay. And I had that sent to Ben to just like screw around with. Yeah. I sent Ben another prototype, one with foil on it. He's like slinging them on it. He's the only guy in the world that's got that's fished it. I mean, oh. And he's got one. Um, and so, you know, I, I keep kind of putting it on the back burner because at the time for me, I was the only employee of Nichols. You know, new stuff is expensive. The dyes to produce these, like the barrier to entry is pretty high. Um, and to ask me to like go get a dye made, go order the material, go find a to hook. To test the whim. Right. Um, so I kind of put it off for a good bit. I finally decided, like, Ben sent me a picture of his that had, like, no foil left on it because he had been catching so many fish on large it. Large mouth. Yeah, large yeah. mouth. All large mouth on Kentucky Lake for the right. most part. Or any, he fished a few other places on Some Tennessee, the Tennessee River. Tennessee River stuff, yeah. But that's mostly where he was, you know, messing around. As a West Coaster who's mm -hmm. more used to big profile lures, yeah. I was honestly surprised to see this come out of Texas slash yeah. Tennessee River area. I'm like, for oh, sure. Okay. For sure, and I guess it had just been kind of recognized, you know, he spent so much time on the water. He really did electronics guiding, was his main deal. Got it. So his specialty was offshore fishing. finding these offshore schools and figuring out how to make them bite. Mm -hmm. And when you do that enough, it only takes a few times of seeing huge fish right. chasing huge gizzards to realize like what we think is a big bait is just not a big bait. Totally. I mean, even at the time a 10XD was relatively new. Yep. Well, sure, like the total profile on that bait is big, but the body size is right. not that big. No. Nope. And so it's just like there was this disconnect of like what we thought was a big profile versus what actually was a, you know, a big bait fish. For sure. So he's catching on this thing. He talks me into it. I sent, spent like all the money I had to buy the mold. I bought the dye. I had a run of 500 of them made. That was like all that I could do. Right. Um, we stamped them out. They sent them to me, and I sold Ben half of those at cost. Whatever they cost me, I, I sold it to him at cost. But the same week that I got them in was the practice period for an FLW tour level event on Kentucky Lake. Okay. Ben's a well-connected guy with that community. He just he literally bought the 250 for me at cost and passed them out to all the guys who were up there practicing. And it was like, you know, our hope was maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe somebody will catch a fish on the thing. It'll be really cool. And it ended up, you know, at the end, like that was the story of the event where right. all of a sudden, like half the top 10 are catching fish on this thing. That made headlines. Yeah. Well, and for us, the benefit was like, it's so big and ridiculous. You couldn't like lie about it for almost. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. you know, where like, hey, a lot of times I get it. Somebody's going to use this spoon and it's like a Strike King spoon. You know, I get that. That's just how the world works. Yeah. But with this, like, you can't make it up. Hell no. You can see it a mile away from a camera boat. So it was just like media gold for us. Now it was, it also like led into the most miserable time of my life because <laughs> all of a sudden I had five, I only had 250 left. And now the world is crawling I mean, up your ass. In the first six the months, I think we ended up selling like 30,000 of them. Wow. But I didn't have any of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember I threw my father-in-law, my dad, like three friends, my wife, we were all just like answering the phones and emails for like a week and a half straight to try to handle like what was happening. Wow. Um, and you know, it was just like so stressful because, you know, I didn't have the stuff. It takes time to make this stuff. Yeah. People thought I was just like sitting on a big pile of spoons, like <laughs> laughing about the whole thing. But it ended up like what it really did for the brand was it like relaunched the brand in a sense where Got again, it. like... All of a sudden, we had a product that people had to have. Right. Stores like had to carry these baits, mm -hmm. and it just opened the door for us to say like, "But we've got so much more to offer." Um, and so it was really like our foot in the door moment to kind of say like, "Here we are! Like this is the big new thing, and we got more for you, and we got more coming down the pipe for you." Um, and it was just like a super fun, like crazy thing. Like 
again, like to me, it was just all like luck, being in the right place at the right time. I mean, yeah. you know, still. Well, like, you did your due diligence and being prepared and, and doing all the work leading up to that point. Sure. And circumstance came together. It just one of those things, like the stars aligned, and and to have then also gotten so like fortunate, had that tournament go on where like it just like the stars aligned. Um, but that was like a real launch point for the brand again, where it had just been me. That was a point where you know a month later we hired our first two employees. Yeah. You know, and from there it's just been kind of a slow grind. You know, to to keep building that base back up. Um, and now I think you know we're at. I mean, you looked around, you know, we're at like 20 something employees here. It's awesome. Um, and so it's just like, it's been a cool, I mean, the spoon is still a day to day. Like that was a bubble that's definitely like normalized. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, spoons are still an enormous part of our, our business. Um, You're seeing growth in different yeah, countries, right? That's, that's one reason it's a fun right? bait for me. I think that's one reason I love that it was the spoon that got us there. Yeah. It wasn't like, I laugh all the time. Like it's not some new technology. Like. There's no lights and lasers. No, or this anything. is some of the oldest technology in fishing. It's just a big piece of metal. Right. That's like literally all it is. Yeah. And like I love that that's what got us there. You know, it's so simple, and there's so many applications that, that we just don't even know about. I'm gonna send a bunch of baits to my Australian boys. Oh man. And they're yeah. gonna catch all kinds of wild things. They have, uh, they have in the past, uh, not a ton, but it's funny. Like every year, the market grows a little bit. Yeah. Like this past year offshore stripers in the northeast like obviously this is a striper bait like right. it's so clear looking well, at it riley and i saw that when we first got out there and yeah. every boat had your spoon it just on. it's funny though like where it just takes a little bit of time for those things to like grow and, and it's so cool to like learn about you know i got a call the other week that somebody's catching pike with them you know in canada oh, yeah. and it's just neat like that the story grows and we keep learning about new applications for things that we had no intention of. Absolutely. And it's like fun for me to get those calls and just tell these guys like, Hey man, I'm glad you're doing this. I got no idea <laughs> like how to catch a muskie. I'm right. pumped that you're oh, doing that with you. Lake St. Clair, when they get on those bait balls out there, I, I, I'm kicking myself because I didn't realize at the time, mm -hmm. like this is a perfect application. Yeah. It and really is. It's just so funny. And like, I have to be honest with people like, Hey man, I'll sell you these baits. Go catch stripers all day. Like I know largemouth and smallmouth. I don't know nothing about stripers, but you go for it. You tell me how to make the best one that we can for your application. We're gonna do it for you. Um, so it's cool. just been like the spoon has been a really cool, you know, like constantly changing like thing for us. For sure. Uh, but part of that's like being willing to you know kind of go with the changes. So. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to keep pitching you ideas on some collaborative, we like customized, ideas. we like ideas, big spoons for big bass dreams in the future. Well, the other thing that I try to remember too is like, there's a reason I'm making the baits and not fishing them. Like, I'm really good at the production <laughs> side. Uh, you know, I'm not always the idea guy, and so I'm always like, I, like being open minded is like half the battle in the bait business. That's huge. And just, just like in fishing. Yeah, and just being okay with like. I'm not the expert on everything, but like you've got ideas and you know and understanding things that I can't even fathom. Yeah, uh, I'm like, a fishing geek, man. Like yeah. I geek out on this. I spend my time on the water, preferably, and I just come across certain scenarios and situations where I see potential right. to create something that would really exploit that situation. Well, that's what I'm so interested in because like I, my time is spent here in the shop, unfortunately. But it, it's, it's a perfect marriage because you can, you have the expertise to bring those ideas Hopefully. and concepts yeah. to life. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, and that's, it. Hopefully. Well, that, and that's what I like. The place. Well, and that's what I like to do. Like, that's what I really enjoy doing. Like I love, I mean, honestly, like I got into all this cause I love fishing. Right. Like, that's what I love. But I also recognize, like, I don't want to be on the road for 250 days a year, you know? I'm a homebody. Like, you saw it. I mean, we go to breakfast. I like it when the waitress knows my name. Like, that's The waitress? Like. Everybody knew your name. <laughs> that's what I really like. And uh, so for me, like, this is how I've been able to, like, carve out my niche in the outdoors yeah. industry, but still be who I am and, like, you know, be a homebody, you know, but still, like, have fun doing it. So. Super sick. Well, I, I love the journey down the, the history of such an impactful... Uh, piece of fishing tackle yeah uh, if you guys want to see more uh, check out the Nichols lures social media um, he's always 
posting like little tidbits of what's going on here in the shop. Yeah. Uh, we'll be utilizing the product heavily uh, going forward. So there won't be any shortage to that. And be on the lookout for, you know, hopefully something really special and cool. Down Never tomorrow. know. It could be some special colors yeah, coming your way. Yeah. Uh, Brooks, thanks for spending time with us and taking us down memory lane. Absolutely. Giving us a little history lesson. Uh, yeah, as, as a fan of the fishing culture and history, uh, I geek out on hearing about like how this came to fruition. Like, dude, yeah. like a 30 foot dwarf like hammered this from the you know, dying star. That's what it looks like. To, to me. <laughs> and and yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Like, I can see all the rough, you know, edges and, and just first one right there. Mm. That's there have been many more. That's freaking cool, man. So, yeah. if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, we got a lot more cool stuff coming. Um, check us out. We appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Oliver Nye. Brooks, I'm not. I missed one and hit one, man, that's getting some Two, three, four, five more, come on, that's ripping up The way the bass miss sticking, the way my feet